I'm so excited to try these out. These are wonderful. <laughs> these are the Ohuhu brush tip markers. Um, they have a chisel and on one side they have a brush tip on the other. I've never tried these before. I have only ever tried um, Copics and uh, Faber-Castell um, alcohol markers. So I'm excited to give these a go. I am gonna swatch all of these babies and then I will be back. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do is, aside from swatching them for like a general review, is I'm going to make an illustration and then I'm gonna do a three marker challenge with these because what's a better way to, to try them out? <laughs> so yeah, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do the illustration before I pick the markers so that it doesn't influence me and make it easier. Cause that would be fine. Oh. Hey, mine's not cracked or broken. Most people get these like cracked. They're um, like a plastic pad to put between your paper so that it doesn't bleed onto other stuff. Um, since alcohol markers usually bleed through most kinds of paper. Um, but yeah, goodness, it's so exciting. There seem to be a lot of green colors in this, I'm seeing. My one uh, thing that makes me nervous about these is that you can't, um, you can't purchase like individual colors. You have to purchase the entire set. So say I run out of this lavender color, which is apparently P4. Also, I love that they have color names. <laughs> um, say if I run out of this color, I can't order that color again. I'd have to buy the entire set. But it was also really cheap. This was like uh, 30 bucks and I got a discount on it from Drawing With Waffles, so it was a little bit cheaper than that with like free shipping versus like one of these is 350, this Copic Chow. So, you know, these were like 50 some odd cents a piece. Okay guys, I apologize for these two bars. That's sunlight coming in from my window that I haven't been able to block. Just coming back to you here for a minute. Sorry, the audio is really crappy. Um, there is something that I've just realized, aside from the fact that I am inexperienced with markers. My hands are sometimes very shaky from some of the medication that I'm on, and just in general. Um, and while this paper is really awesome, and it's not like the marker is bleeding, I am having trouble staying inside my own lines because my hand is shaking um, so just bear that in mind as you're watching me do this because I got like literally to here from my hand before I I mixed it up also I am finding that since this is the lightest skin tone in the package and I would like a lighter skin tone it's not necessarily a problem for me but I could see where it would be a problem for someone else if this was their only markers um, and the reason that's not a problem for me is two reasons actually. Um, the first being that I don't ever really use markers, so this is my first like actual set. But um, the real reason is that I have tried to use markers in the past, so I actually have quite a few skin tones in Copics as well as a skin tone pack in Faber Castell markers. So. If I decide that I really like these because there's a bunch of other colors, the skin tone thing isn't going to be an issue for me, but it might be an issue for you, and I will judge that in the times to come. So far, it's really fun. <laughs> I really like these brush markers, um, but we'll see where I get at the end. I just wanted to pop in and tell you that while I was thinking of it, even though it sounds like 
a war is raging outside. I just had a really interesting thing that I didn't know was a possibility. I mean, like, I did know, but I have not experienced it, I don't think, or at least not often enough for me to remember. I just opened the cap for this one and it splattered purple, like all the way over here. <laughs> like, I can fix it, I can remove these because they're in the background in Procreate, but it just kind of threw me for a loop a little bit because I wasn't expecting it. I mean, I guess you don't ever expect that it's going to, like, freak out, but I guess that means they're really juicy. don't like about markers versus watercolor is that they take forever <laughs> like with watercolor I can just throw down a layer hair dry it throw down a layer hair dry it whereas with marker it just takes so much longer like I don't know I am really really 
really enjoying these markers though. These like kind of feather into each other. It feels like it's blending itself for me and I'm really cool with that. Like with these, with my scales, I like at the top where I started the scales, they kind of blend together so that it looks like just texture. And then when I'm going over it with its own, like each time I go over it with a couple of darker scales, then it looks more and more like what it should be, I guess. I don't know how to explain it, but it, it's very, it's giving it a lot of texture, a lot of depth that I, I don't know if it's just that I don't have the right colors of Copics to do it because I really, I've got like 12 or 13 um, Copics and they're in a very limited like color palette, which is one of the things that I'm really liking about these Ahu markers is that I've got a lot of colors to choose from and basically none of them overlap with the colors that I have from Copic. While I am not using any Copic today, I think that in the long run, this is going to be super helpful. Like being able to try out a bunch of colors and see if I want to use these later on is very helpful instead of just buying a bunch of Copic markers and then not using all of the colors. Like I feel like if you're going to pay like four or five dollars for a Copic marker, you should know that you want to use it. And right now, Ahuhu is giving me this option of experimenting with colors and also not having to be like protective of them because these really aren't a lot of money that especially in comparison to Copics that it's like I don't feel bad experimenting I don't feel bad like oh I'm wasting this ink and it's not on like a masterpiece which I feel like art art supplies you sometimes feel like that like I don't want to use this I want to wait until I'm perfect and because you never use the supply then you never get any better <laughs> um, I don't know. So far, I'm giving this like a glowing review. I don't have anything that I'm really mad about other than the obvious cons. If you know anything about Ahuhu markers, you can only buy them in sets. You can't buy them individually, which I think if you could buy them individually um, or buy like replacement ink for them, these would absolutely replace Copics. Like, they probably don't have the same level of quality control that Copics do, but as far as like amateur to like student grade things, like as long as you like aren't making art your full-time job, in which case you can afford Copics, maybe. <laughs> Copics are really expensive. Artists don't make that much money. That was kind of a lie, but um, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like these are a really good option. I'm really, really happy with my my decision to get them. And this brush tip is so lovely. I'm really, I'm really liking it. Ooh, I really like that as a method of doing scales. Just kind of like rolling it. Ooh, that's nice. Not something that I've tried before see all kinds of experiments. I don't really work with markers at all. Like I do have some Copics, but I'm very protective of them. And every time I'm like, oh, I want to make an illustration. I'm like, oh yeah, I don't really have the colors to do that. And it's also easier for me to do, <laughs> uh, do it with watercolor. Although I have to say that the nice thing about markers is that you don't really need a setup. You don't have to like get water out and find the right brushes and, and all of this nonsense. You just kind of grab and go. And this little Ohuhu case is like, it has a handle and a zipper and all this. Like you could chunk it in your bag and, and be all set. I'm very cool with that. This is so neat. Oh man. I also feel like because they kind of blend out in each other, bearing in mind that this might also be aided by the paper that I'm using, but 
I feel like um, as long as you're using them like wet to wet on edges and not letting them dry, they seem to blend into each other. Like I'm not really getting streakiness or very little streakiness, which is nice. It's very nice. I'm very cool with this. Why didn't they have these when I was a kid? My kids today have it so nice. This isn't Crayola. <laughs> Not to like hate on Crayola, but when Crayola can do this, then I will be happy. <laughs> God, it's so wet that these little lines are disappearing. Like I have to wait until that dries in order to go back down and put more um, of these scales because they're just disappearing. markers were iridescent you know what I mean like I wish that I could make shiny scales without having to go in with a different medium later <laughs> let me know down below if there's some brand of alcohol markers that comes in like glitter tones that I don't know about because I don't ever use markers because <laughs> I'd be tempted to give those a go no lie. I feel like I'm really overworking this because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop working on this scale things. And I'm going to, I don't know. limits with these right now aside from just having more colors and I am honestly thinking about just buying um, all of the whatever the regular ones the bullet nibs are like getting that big ass set of bullet nib ones I think they've got like a 120 color one which is probably overkill but at the same time <laughs> I feel like my only limitations on this right now are just my familiarity with markers that I don't have any experience with them. I don't feel like the supplies are working against me, which is nice because a lot of supplies do feel like they're working against you. Like, um, not as a comparison review necessarily, but I'm gonna compare these. <laughs> um, the Faber-Castell pit pens are like decent, but they're really streaky or at least I've always found them to be really streaky. And they, to be fair, they don't have a brush nib, which I think goes a long way. They do have a bullet nib, um, but they also are really hard. Like, I don't know. The colors are good, but they just, um, I don't know. They're not as juicy as this is. I'm curious to see how long these markers would last. Like how many illustrations you would get through before they would start to dry up. I guess that will be also a good indicator. I probably will, you probably won't order the 120 set until A, my house is done, cause that's expensive. <laughs> but B, um, I probably will wait to order that until um, I have run out of it. I always gravitate towards like pastel and medium tone kind of hues. And I'm trying to, in like all my art, be better about building up more contrast. So I'm trying to put in some of this really dark blue for that, but also I am now really noticing that the colors I picked before are basically the lightest colors that were available to me. And once I layered them a couple of times, they are no longer the lightest colors. <laughs> like, they are just not. Um, crap, what color did I just use? Let's try, maybe that one. Yep, that's the one. God, these blend out so nicely. I 
have a feeling like since I wasn't intending to talk during this video and then I wound up just keeping talking, I have a feeling that when I go to edit this, the sound is going to be terrible because I'm going to wind up just putting music uh, in between these sections where I'm talking because I think I'm telling you everything that I, <laughs> that I want to tell you. <laughs> um, Aside from whatever my ending impressions will be. going to list down for you below what kind of cardstock I'm using because I remembered that it's cardstock it's not Bristol board <laughs> um, it's not I'm sure it's bleeding through the other side but it's not feathering out at all and I did my line art with this in microns pigma whatever they are microns um, and I'm not having any problem with feathering at all in any of this and I'm really happy about it <laughs> because I was a little bit worried. Oh, I like that combination so much better. I should have made the whole tail this blue. Dang it. It's okay, I'll just have to draw another mermaid. <laughs> there are never too many of those in the world. If I were doing this normally, I would take out some color pencils like 20 minutes ago <laughs> um, just to add more texture and a little bit more of a color like shift to this tail. Um, but I really want to see what I can do just with um, the Ohuhu markers. So we're doing it this way. All right, you guys, this is the final illustration that I wound up with using the Ohuhu brush tip markers. I am really, really happy with it as someone who is really, really new to markers. I think that it came out pretty well. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. I can't wait to see what I'm able to create once I've had more time to practice with these and with markers in general. 
So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If it wasn't already clear by my sort of mixed commentary, I really like these markers. Yeah, I, I really like these markers and I really definitely endorse them, I guess. Um, they're super cheap. I think they're really worth the money. It's unfortunate that you can't buy individual colors or replacements. Um, you have to buy the entire set again. But I think that you get a lot of markers for what it costs. I think for me it was about $30. Um, I think they're normally $40. I just had like a discount code, but still $40 for all of those markers is insane. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye guys. Go make something. <laughs>